The Douglas XB-43 Jetmaster was a breakthrough bomber prototype that the United States launched in the 1940s. This aircraft was the first American jet bomber and was a groundbreaking design based on the XB-42. However, it was never used in an operational capacity owing to design and stability difficulties. Despite this, Glenn Edwards was able to set a record during his five-hour trip across the United States, departing from Long Beach, California, and arriving in Washington, D.C. Even with its success, the project ran into more difficulties with design and mass manufacturing. A business experiment to develop a high-speed, high-altitude attack aircraft was the Douglas XP-42 Mixmaster project. Air Force officials have been debating the viability of a jet-powered bomber since October 1943. The Army Air Force was shown the earliest version of the twin-engine bomber aircraft that Douglas Aircraft had planned and named XB-43. In contrast to the sophisticated and costly B-29, the military intended the aircraft to be a small, inexpensive product. The B-29's performance determined whether or not an XB-43 would occur. The first prototype was powered by reciprocating engines, but because they were mounted inside the fuselage, there was no drag on the laminar flow airfoil wing. The airframe appeared to be most suitable for propulsion by turbojets. The United States Air Force asked Douglas to create two turbojet prototypes, designated XB-43, when it renewed its XB-42 contract in March 1944. The XB-42 was designed to serve as the Jetmaster XB-43's launch pad. With its cruciform tail, coaxial pusher propeller, and cylindrical fuselage, the XB-42 was a new aircraft. The aircraft employed tricycle gears on the ground, and air intakes were located on the leading edge of the wing. The bombardier was seated in the nose section, and the pilot and co-pilot had separate bubble canopies. Four rear-directed cannons and 50-caliber machine guns were used to defend the aircraft. A sophisticated targeting mechanism and a constrained field of fire characterized the 1943-designed XB-42 aircraft prototype. Making the plane fly quickly enough to avoid confrontation with the opponent was the aim. The aircraft's clean wings and stacked propellers were powered by Allison V-17-10-125 liquid-cooled engines in the prototype. At a projected manufacturing rate of 200 planes per month, Douglas sought to mass-construct the aircraft. Though these plans never came to pass, the U.S. Air Force thought about ordering 50 of the B-43 aircraft. The U.S. AAF chose to concentrate on the XB-45 Tornado Bomber instead, since it would enhance performance in every way. Due to the slowness in the U.S. aviation industry following World War II and problems with J-35 power units, Douglas's XB-43 variant was constructed in almost two years. On May 6, 1944, the first two finished XB-42 prototypes made their first flight. Nevertheless, they did not utilize turbojets. On May 17, 1946, the XB-42, the first turbojet bomber aircraft, took off from Morock Army Air Base under the pilots Bob Brush and engineer Russell Thaw. The aircraft experienced handling problems, including as heavy tails on takeoff and landing, severe vibration and yaw, and problems with the V-1710 engine's cooling. Notwithstanding these difficulties, the aircraft's high speed was achieved. The XB-42 was a successful aircraft that could reach a top speed of 410 miles per hour and carry 8,000 pounds of cargo. Nevertheless, the high-altitude B-29 Superfortress's successful completion of testing diminished its usefulness, negating the need for more aircraft. Designs that relied on piston engines were becoming obsolete as jet engine technology advanced. An engine breakdown during testing put the XB-42 in a state of temporary uncertainty until it was dismantled. Due to the aircraft's early problems and drawn-out development, the B-29 Superfortress was finally developed in place of the XB-42. 
Glenn Edwards flew an XB-42 from Long Beach to Washington, D.C. in 5 hours and 17 minutes in December 1945, setting a speed record. A gear failure caused damage to the aircraft, but its sister craft made it through and was put to service in test programs. Under the clean wings were installed two 1,600-pound thrust Westinghouse turbojets. Douglas Aircraft created the XB-42, a test aircraft, to demonstrate the potential and difficulties of jet engine technology. Although it could go at a maximum speed of 488 kilometers per hour, it was irreparably destroyed. The aircraft was taken out of the Army Air Force's official inventory by 1949. Douglas used the XB-42 airframe to build the jet-powered prototype XB-43 under a modified 1944 contract. Two prototypes were constructed, one with two inlets cut on each side and the other modified for static testing. In addition, the cruciform tail's bottom stabilizer was removed from the XB-42 and its extended exhaust ducts were swapped out for coaxial propellers. The Army Air Force commissioned Douglas Aircraft to create the XB-43, a bomber and attack version. This was a major project for the company. The XB-43 was essential in the development of new protocols and jet engine technology, and the military eagerly awaited its development and testing by Douglas. In 1948, the YB-43, the second prototype, was flown to Morocco Air Force Base after it was finished in 1947. The YB-43's nose cracked from extreme heat or cold, thus plywood was used in its stead. The second prototype, which flew 300 hours before being withdrawn in 1953, was created in 1951 by cannibalizing the first XB-43. The program as a whole was delayed because of the XB-43's repeated delays in J-35 power plants. Within six months, the war was over and the XB-43 was no longer considered a production aircraft by the Army Air Force, but rather a test bed. They concentrated on the B-45 Tornado, which was to be the world's first jet bomber in service. Despite outperforming expectations, the real first jet bomber was left without a contract. The XB-43's methods, techniques, and procedures established a standard for jet bombers in the future, and the hours spent doing test flights yielded important data for advancements in the field. The YB-43 prototype is also referred to as the A-43 in some papers, indicating that it may be used in an assault capacity. The two surviving variants are the XB-42 and 43, which are kept at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio, as well as the U.S. Air Force Museum. The XB-42 and 43, while not withstanding the test of time, heralded in a new phase of speed-focused aircraft development in the United States. The U.S. was heavily involved in the development of jet bombers during the Cold War, and it was instrumental in averting nuclear war with the Soviet Union. The XB-43 was the first jet bomber to fly in the nation. To watch more videos on American bombers, click the link on the left. To watch more than two dozen videos on German aircrafts, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.